Okay, so here we are, Algebra 1B, credit for. This is now lesson 21.1, which starts on page 9 of the packet. And this is solving equations by factoring uh, x squared plus bx plus c. But um, let's, uh, let's see, we're going to start actually over on page um, 10. So on page 10, we are going to uh, start with understanding some, just some basics before we actually get into the factoring. So we've got two binomial factors there, x plus 8 and then x plus 9. And <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to, it says identify p and q. Uh, so we're going to call the number in the first factor p and the number in the second factor q. And then it, what we're attempting to do here, remember this, we're factoring in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. And what we're going to find here is the values of b and c. And the way you find the values of b and c, for b, we're going to add uh, p plus q. So we're going to add 8 plus 9, and that's 17. And for q, uh, we're going to multiply, or excuse me, for c, for c, we're going to multiply p and q. p is 8, q is 9, and 8 times 9 is 72. And so we could write this uh, <coughs> trinomial. Now, on all of these, A is going to be 1 for the ones we're going to be doing in this lesson. So we have 1x squared or just x squared. B is 17, and then C is 72. And oops, there we go. Now, what they want us to do <coughs> is verify. Is that really true? Does that really work? So verify by multiplying. So let's go ahead and take the x plus 8 and x plus 9 and multiply just like we did in previous lessons. And we've got x times x. Remember the ones are there. x times x is x squared. x times 9 is 9x. 8 times x is 8x. And 8 times 9 is 72. Like, uh, the middle terms will be like terms. We add them up. 9 plus 8 is 17. So we have 17x. And then notice we get the exact same thing. So we find B, again, by adding these numbers, and we find C by multiplying those numbers. And so one more time we're going to do that just to see the connection. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. And for this one, we, are, we have the factors number two on the same page, x plus 8 and x minus 7. So... So P is 8, Q is negative 7. So to find B, we're going to add up 8 and negative 7. And to find C, we're going to multiply 8 and negative 7. So 8 plus negative 7, uh, that's like 8 minus 7, which is 1. <coughs> and then 8 times negative 7 is negative 56. So using this method to write our the polynomial uh, from uh, these numbers, we would write x squared... And then B, remember A is 1. In this case, B is also 1. So we have X squared plus 1X, or just X. And then C is negative 56, so minus 56. And they want us to uh, check by multiplying, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, but we'll see that we will, it will work out. So we have X times X, X squared, X times negative 7 is negative 7X. 8 times x is 8x, and 8 times negative 7 is negative 56. <coughs> Combining the like terms in the middle, negative 7 plus 8 is positive 1. So we have x squared plus 1x, or just x, minus 56, and everything checks out perfectly. So really, now you have a couple of things. We're going to understand this, this is like a, a preview or um, a setup for how factoring works. Uh, and this also tells you you've got kind of a shortcut now for multiplying because you can just take these two numbers. Of course, this only works when you have uh, just 1x here. And um, you just add these numbers up. You get the coefficient of x multiplying. You get the constant term, c. All right, so let's go ahead now. And uh, nothing to do on, that was page 10. There was nothing to do on page 11. Uh, but uh, there are examples to read. Nothing for us to do here in the video but definitely stuff you want to read. So now we are going to get into factoring. 
and something that uh, if you are in the SGI classes, this should be posted in Google Classroom. Uh, if you are uh, if you're working this independently and just using the videos, uh, see me. We can get this for you. What this is, this is the, um, it's a list of the factors, all the factors of all the numbers up to 100. And sometimes we're going to have numbers larger than 100. So uh, we'll have to come up with them on our own and we'll show you that at uh, some point. But uh, for all, for most numbers, for numbers less than 100, this is going to be very helpful because factoring is a kind of a process of, uh, of a guess and check type thing and one of the parts of the process is the list out the factors remember we were multiplying we had that 8 times 9 is 72 well we knew um, we are we had 8 times 9 is 72 but it turns out 72 has a lot of other factor pairs so if you were trying to factor that trinomial you wouldn't necessarily know that that was 8 and 9 and so coming up with the factor pairs sometimes can be a process this is something that really cuts that down. And what I'm going to do actually, just real quick, if you want to take a, a screenshot of it, is I'm going to uh, present a window here, and that's going to be the, uh, let's see. We want to present. Hold on just one second here. So this should be there we go okay so um, what you see there I'm going to scroll up to the top I'm going to give a few seconds uh, you can pause the video obviously I won't wait very long uh, and you can take a screenshot or a picture of it um, so I'll give you a chance to do that. I know sometimes when you pause a video, though, there's other things that pop up. So, And I'll scroll down. I think I have to do this in three parts. It won't all fit on the screen. So there's that. And we'll scroll. I think it went to about 18, so we'll overlap a little. Um, there's the next part. And again, take a screenshot of that. But again, if you're in the SGI classes, this will be in Google Classroom. This is just for someone that's using the videos that maybe doesn't have an immediate access to it. Um, although we can get you into Google Classroom even if you're not in the SGI classes. And then uh, finally, the last part of it. And there you go with that. Okay. All right. So again, we'll, we'll stop because you can, uh, now that you know how much time you have, you can uh, re. Um, uh, re, you know, rewind the video, go back, and um, there we go. Okay, all right. So now we're back. And so uh, if you have that factors chart, if you're actually able to print it out, or if you've come into the site, you pick up a packet or something, and you can pick up a, a paper copy of this, that's even going to be more helpful because then you can have it right next to you as you're working these problems. All right, so on page 12, <coughs> we're going to be factoring... Um, x squared plus 15x plus 14. And again, factoring means we're going to write the two binomial factors that if we were to multiply them, we would end up with x squared plus 15x plus 14. So now, um, and again, we're on top of page 12. They want us to identify the values of a, b, and c. So on all of these, a is 1, and we're not going to be doing much with that. The important ones, as you saw in the last part, are b and c. B is the coefficient of X, remember that's 15, and C is 14. All right, so what we actually start with, if you look at that chart down below, uh, we're going to look at the factor pairs of 14. So this is where you go to the, uh, this is where that factors chart's going to come in super handy. So you <coughs> grab your factors chart, find 14 uh, there on the left-hand side, and you see that the two factor pairs are 1 and 14 and then 2 and 7. Now, those are, that is not the only way to multiply and get positive 14 because not only do two positives multiply to a positive, but so do two negatives. So we have to consider uh, the same factors but with negatives there. All right, now, so now what we're looking for in, is the pair. We, all of these multiply to 14. 
we're looking for the pair that adds to 15. So only one of these is going to add up to 15. So we start with 1 plus 14, and look at that. Look at that. First one works. So that's yes. Now, once you find the one that works, there's no reason to go any further. So you can just write no for the rest of these. They won't work. Just, just to show you, and you don't have to do this, but 2 plus 7 is 9. Negative 1 plus negative 14 is negative 15, not 15. And negative 2 plus negative 7 is negative 9. But again... That's just to show you that there is only one pair that will add up to the right number. Um, so once you find that one, if you're lucky and it's the first one, then you can stop. Sometimes it'll be the last one, but we were lucky here it was the first one. So we have uh, 1 and 14 are the factors. Now, the way they want you to write that at the bottom, step 3, it says use P and Q to give the factorization of the trinomial. So P and Q are just the factors, 1 and 14. So the value of P is 1, value of Q is 14, uh, and the factorization is what we have here, and that is our answer. All right, let's go to number 2. Let's do number 2. All right, number 2, we have X squared minus 12X plus 27. And on this one, uh, we went to values of A, B, and C. Again, A is 1. We're not going to underline that because we're not going to do anything else with A, so we'll kind of just write it there, but that's it. B is negative 12. Don't forget the negative. And C is 27. So we, um, we're going to look for the pair, factor pairs of C. And again, and you'll be referring this to this a lot, you go to your uh, uh, factors chart here, and the factor pairs, you find 27 there on the left-hand side. The factor pairs are 1 and 27, and then 3 and 9. So again, those are not the only ways to get uh, positive 27. There's also negative 1, negative 27, negative 3, negative 9. Now, we're looking for the pair here, though, that adds to negative 12. So we want to find the pair that adds to negative 12. So again, all of these will multiply to positive 27. We already kind of checked that box. We know that part works. But only one of them will add up to negative 12. So we add these up. 1 plus 27 is 28. Nope, that doesn't work. That's not negative 12. 3 plus 9 is positive 12. That doesn't work. That's not negative 12. Negative 1 plus negative 27 is negative 28. That doesn't work. But finally, negative 3 plus negative 9 is negative 12. That's it. That works. And that's the one we answer yes to. So like we said before, sometimes you get lucky. It'll be the first one. Sometimes it'll be the last one. Sometimes one of the ones in the middle. So um, let's go ahead and write that out. We have factors are x minus 3 and then x minus 9. And of course, so the way you're going to write your answer, the values of p and q are p is negative 3, q is negative 9. And then the factor is x minus 3 times x plus 9. Okay, that is it for page 12. Let's go now. Uh, there's some examples for you to read on page 13. We're going to go over to page uh, 14 because that's where the work is. So we're going to be doing more factoring here. And now for the first time, we're going to have a value of c that is negative. So we have x squared plus 7x minus 30. And we need to identify the uh, values of A, B, and C. A is 1. Again, we don't want to put, underline that because we're not going to focus on that. B is 7. And C is negative 30. Okay, so um, again, to the factors chart, we look for 30 uh, going towards about a little bit below middle of the left-hand side. And there's actually four factor pairs of 30, which are, I mean, we're not going to worry about the negative part quite yet. We're just going to list out the factors. 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, and then 5 and 6. So now, this is the first problem. The other two, remember, C was positive. So when you multiply to get a positive, that's either two positives or two negatives. Positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. If C is negative, that's got to be a positive times a negative. So we have to consider um, the situation where the first number is negative. And I'm going to draw a line here just to kind of separate them. 
And then we're going to list out those same factors again. And now we have to consider the possibility where the second number, the larger number on these, is negative. And then we're going to go through all of these and see which of these adds up to positive 7. So again, all of these will multiply to negative 30. So we add these up. Negative 1 plus 30 is 29. Negative 2 plus 15 is 13. Negative 3 plus 10 is 7. And there we go, just like that. We got our answer almost past the one up. So focused on adding them up. So there we go. Our factors are negative 3 and positive 10. So we've got x minus 3 and then x plus 10. And then it says the um, yeah, same thing. So the values of P and Q are negative 3 for P, 10 for Q. And then the factorization is just what you have there, what we wrote out in the parentheses. Okay, that is that one. Let's go to number two on the same page, on page uh, 14. All right, so number two, we have x squared minus 21x minus 72. And again, the values of a, b, and c, a is 1, b is negative 21, and C is negative 72. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the factors of 70, uh, 72, or really negative 72. But to start, we're just going to list out the factors of 72. So we look for 72, 1 to 50 here. 72 is over here on the right. And, oh, 72 has a lot of factor pairs. But don't worry, we're going to... This is going to give us the opportunity to point something out and help you to shortcut this a little bit. So we have 1 and 72, and if you look at those, there's six factor pairs there. 1 and 72, 2 and 36, 3 and 24, 4 and 18, uh, 6 and 12, and then 8 and 9. Okay, now I know what you're thinking already. You don't have space there, uh, Mr. G, for the rest of the... Um, for the rest of the factors, and no, I don't. Um, but what we're gonna do, since there's so many factors, and think about it, if it was the last pair that was the word, we'd have to add up 12 things here, which is not terrible, but it is a lot. So let's see if we can work, as they, what's that expression, work smarter, not harder? So let's see if we can examine this a little bit. So um, let's do this. So first of all, let's write B here, negative 21. Let's think a little bit. So maybe we don't have to write out those other six factor pairs. So if we're multiplying, the factors of 72 are here. We're multiplying to a negative 72. So we know it's got to be a positive times a negative. We know it's a positive and a negative. And you say, yeah, I know. you got to do that thing where the smaller number is negative, then list them out again. The larger number is negative. And that's a lot, again, that's a lot of work to do. But let's, let's think about this. Let's not just do this blindly. Let's analyze a little bit and think critically. So if the numbers are adding up to a negative, what does that tell us? When we've got a one positive, one negative, if they're adding to a negative, that tells us that the larger number has got to be negative. So the situation where the larger number is positive can't work because they're adding to a negative. Can't work in this case, I should say. So we're only going to look at the uh, situation where the larger number is negative. And so we're not going to even consider where the larger number is positive because there's no way that can work. There's no way you can add a positive and a negative where the larger number is positive and end up with a negative answer. So again, learning to think critically. Now, again, if you're not totally, um, if that totally doesn't make 100% uh, sense, rewind the last minute or so and, and listen to that explanation again just to make sure you understand it. Okay, so we add these up now. We've got 1 and negative 72, negative 71. Nope. So we write no there. 2 plus negative 36 is negative 34. No. 3 plus negative 24. Hey, there we go. Negative 21. We answer yes. Therefore, we can ignore the rest. And look at that. A minute ago, we were worried we we're going to have to do 12 additions. And it only turned out we had to do 3. And the most we could have possibly have done was 6. So our factors there are positive 3 and negative 24. So the values of P and Q, P is positive 3, Q is negative 24, and there you go with the factors right there. Okay, 
So again, learning to think critically. And then on, let me add one more thing. As you go, probably, maybe not yet, we're just starting this, but looking at down the line, you're going to start to get a feel maybe uh, um, for which uh, factor pair is going to work. You'll just start getting a feeling about it. You'll start to kind of intuitively be able to figure that out. Uh, but for right now, we're going to stick to listing them out because if you think you've got a, a, like a feeling of which is going to be the right one and then we're not totally understanding it yet, that can also create some confusion. So we don't want to go there quite yet. All right, so now page 15, uh, examples for you to read. Uh, nothing for us to do yet there. And then on page 16, now we're going to get into uh, using factoring to solve equations. And then we're also going to connect that to the x-intercepts on the graph. Uh, they have a table there on page 16. We're just going to use Desmos uh, to, um, to verify those uh, answers. And we'll show you that in a second. Okay, uh, and then actually from Desmos, you can fill in the table as well, too. All right, so our first problem there is x squared minus 4x equals 5. Now, the first thing you have to do is get that equal to 0. So if it's not equal to 0, it's equal to 5. So we have to get rid of the 5 by subtracting 5 to both sides. And I'm not going to write the 5 first, but I'm offsetting it um, because it's there's no like terms here. So x squared minus 4x minus 5, because if I line it up here, that kind of implies I'm going to combine those. And then 5 minus 5 is 0. All right, so now we're going to factor this just like we did the other ones, but again, we're going to use those factors to solve the equation. So we've got, uh, let's see, the values of a, b, and c. Let's see how they, what they're asking to do here. Well, we, we only need b and c here, so b is negative 4 and C is negative 5. All right, so in that chart, uh, the factors, pairs, well, you actually, you know what, let's just write the chart. Let's maybe make it easier, right? So C is negative 5, and factors of 5 are 1 and 5. That's the only way to get 5. Now, B is negative 4. So again, we can do the same reasoning we did on the last one, although it's not going to cut off that much work because the only factors of 5 are 1 and 5 here. But again, if we're multiplying to a negative number, it's got to be a positive times a negative. Which one's going to be negative? Well, it has to add to a negative 4, so once again, the larger number has to be negative. So either this works or this isn't factorable. And there are polynomials, are, there are trinomials that are not factorable. We're not going to see too much of that because we're trying to learn how to factor, but that just to let you know that is a possibility. So 1 plus negative uh, 5 is negative 4, so that works. So the factors here are x plus 1 and x minus 5. But we're not done because we're trying to solve this equation, and so this is we're going to apply the zero product property. And that's fancy words for something that just says if we're multiplying uh, two or more uh, terms, expressions together, and the answer is zero, then one of them's got to be zero. It's basically saying the only way to multiply and get zero is if at least one of the numbers is zero. If more is fine, but yeah, at least one. There's no way to multiply and get zero if you don't have a zero in there somewhere. Um, all right, so we have x plus 1 could be zero, or x minus 5 could be zero. Because if, well, let's go ahead and solve this first. The opposite of adding 1 is to subtract 1. We get x equals negative 1. And then the opposite of subtracting 5 is to add 5, and so we get x equals 5. And so just to show you why this works, if we plug in 5, 5 minus 5 is 0. 5 plus 1 is 6, but it doesn't matter. 6 times 0 is 0. Likewise, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Negative 1 minus 5 is negative 6. 0 times negative 6 would be 0. So that's why we have those two solutions. All right, now, what they want us to do from that is to connect this to the x-intercept. Uh, so we're going to go to Desmos, and that's D-E-S-M-O-S dot com. And I know, yes, I know I'm not sharing my screen yet. Let me go ahead and do that. And this, we're just doing a tab, so this will be quicker this time. Okay, so uh, so you go to desmos.com. You should be able to see it on the screen now. You're going to click on graphing calculator. And then what we're going to do is enter uh, this equation. But instead of putting in zero, we're going to say y equals x squared. Now, remember how we do x squared. We press shift and 6. To get us into the exponent that whoa hold on a second we lost I, there we go 
uh, to get us into the exponent, and then we're going to type a 2. And there, well, we already have the, the basic parabola, but we got more there. So <laughs> right arrow to get out of the exponent, and then minus 4x, and then minus 5. And so there we go. And, of course, you can kind of, if it's touch screen, or you can use the plus or minus there to zoom in. And then notice, whoops, then you have to kind of release it there. Whoops. And then notice if we go and we click in that equation on the right-hand side, notice these two gray dots appeared here. This is the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. There's one more down here, by the way. This is the y-intercept. It doesn't help us for uh, what we're doing here, but um, just so you know, it's there. Anyways, notice the x-intercepts, negative 1 and 0. Well, negative 1 was one of our solutions. And what, pray tell, is the other x-intercept? 5 and 0. So notice our other solution was 5. So what we're connecting here is the solutions here to this quadratic uh, equation, to this trinomial, to the x-intercepts on the graph. So in other words, the solutions will be the x-intercepts. It will be those points where the graph crosses the x-axis. And by the way, notice those ordered pairs, negative 1 and 0, and then 5 and 0. That's why we also call the solutions or x-intercepts, we call those the zeros, because these are the values of x that make this function equal to 0. So solutions, x-intercepts, zeros all mean the same thing. All right. Well, let's, I know sharing is caring, but let's stop sharing the screen right now and or stop sharing that other screen or presenting okay anyways let's go on all right so now we're going to try one more just like that just to make sure we understand that they give us here we've got uh, number two on the same page x squared plus seven x equals negative six so once again we want this equal to zero so we've got to get rid of this negative six the opposite of subtracting six is to add six so we add 6 to both sides, we get x squared plus 7x plus 6, and then negative 6 plus 6 is 0. So now we're ready to factor. So b is 7, we'll put that on the right because that's what we're adding to, and then c is 6. So I know it's kind of like reverse, just kind of remember that. Same thing we've been doing the whole video though. All right, so factors of 6 are 1 and 6, and then 2 and 3. So again, we're going to look at this critically. There's also the... Because we're multiplying to a positive number again. So that can be two positives or two negatives. But again, there's no way you're going to multiply two negative, or excuse me, add two negatives and get a positive number. So two negatives will always add up to a negative. So we're not going to even consider these possibilities, even though I'm kind of writing them out now. But just to show you, there's no way those could add up to a positive seven. And you've probably been looking at the video screen screaming, like, the first one's one that works, just do that one. And you're right. For 1 plus 6 is 7. Those are the factors. So we have x plus 1 and x plus 6. Now, there might even be some of you, like, saying, I, you know what? I don't really need this chart. I could have figured that out on my own. And if you can, that's great. But just be careful and then check. Just be sure that the numbers add up to, in this case, 7 and multiply to 6 here. All right, so applying the zero product property, either x plus 1 is 0 or x plus 6 is 0. We subtract 1 to both sides, and we get x equals negative 1. That's our first solution. And we subtract 6 over here because, we get, again, it's a plus 6, so opposite of adding 6, subtracting 6. 0 minus 6 is negative 6, and those are the solutions. And when we graph it right now, um, again, with Desmos, we're going to expect those to be the x-intercepts. So let's go ahead and go back to Desmos. And by the way, you should be getting that graph down. I know we're not doing the table, um, but you can include a couple numbers on the table, like that last one where we had um, uh, negative 1 and 0 and 5 and 0. We know those two points. We also saw the y-intercept at 0, negative 5. So you can include at least those points on the table, and you can even click on the parabola for other points as well. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, share or present. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to type in the equation. Again, it's equal to zero, but since we're graphing it, we're going to say y equals x squared. Now, I didn't need to erase that, but let's show you again. x, shift, and 6 brings us to the exponent. Type in the 
whoops, something. That's me. It's not Desmos messing up. I'm actually hitting the key. So shift and six to get into the exponents. Shift and six, and then press two because it's x squared. Right arrow to get out of the exponent, and then it's plus seven x, and then plus six. All right. So there we go. All right. So we expected our x-intercepts to be negative one and six, and let me make sure. There we go. Sorry, I'm not. There we go. You have to tap on it to release it so it doesn't drag there. All right. So now we go. What I do is I like to go back to the equation because when I do that, I don't need to like click on the parabola because when I click on the equation here, it automatically tells me those points. So we have an x-intercept at negative six and zero. There's one of our solutions. And then there's the other solution at negative 1 and 0. So again, negative 1 and 6 are my solutions. They are my x-intercepts on the graph. And we also call those the zeros because those are the values of x that make the function equal to 0. And you can see the y-coordinate of 0 there. So if you want to put those points down on the table to fill that in, that would be good. And you've also got, let's go ahead and click the equation again. You've also got this... Um, uh, the y-intercept up there, nothing that we need, but you can add that to the table if you want. Okay, so that is that. Uh, page 17, nothing to do. Uh, page 18, uh, we're going to actually get into some word problems. So let's go ahead and go back to the main screen, and we'll start presenting. And over on page 18, and by the way, congratulations we're sticking with this. This is one of the long, this is a little bit longer. We're almost done. We're getting there. It's almost done. I'm trying to go as fast as we can. Um, all right. So let's take a look at page 18. Two word problems there. Number one, it says the length of a rectangular bedroom is two more, two feet more than its width. Uh, so let's go ahead and draw our rectangular bedroom. And if W is the width, if the length is two feet more than the width, so it will be whatever the width is plus two because it's two more than whatever the width is. Uh, and then it says the area of the bed is 120 square feet. Uh, find its length and its width. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so first of all, we have to remember the formula for area of a rectangle is length times width. We are told that the area is 120. The length is W plus 2, and the width is W. So let's go ahead and uh, distribute that. W times W is W squared. W times 2 is 2W. Two Remember, we want this to be equal to 0. It's not equal to 0. It's equal to 120. That looks, let's write that neater. So we subtract 120 to both sides, and we end up with W squared plus 2W minus 120. Now, the beginning of the video, we said we are going to have sometimes a number here larger than 100, so we can't uh, rely on our factor sheet, which is very helpful, but it only goes up to 100. So let's go ahead. Our C is negative 120, and our B is positive 2. All right, so now we're looking for factors of 120. Now, of course, there's 1 and 120. And now what we're going to do, since we don't have the factor sheet for this, we're going to um, use division to find the rest of the factors. So the next number is uh, 2. So 120 divided by 2 is 60, so 2 times 60 are factors. Next is 3. 120 divided by 3, so 3 times 40 are factors, 3 and 40. 120 divided by 4 is 30, so 4 and 30 are factors. 120 divided by 5 is 24, so 5 and 24 are factors. Now, you might be thinking, I'm not going to do this forever, and that's fine. You don't have to do this forever. It's going to end sooner than you think, so let me show you how this works here. Um, 120 divided by 6 is uh, 20, so 6 and 20 are factors. Uh, next is 7. Now, 120 divided by 7 comes out to be a decimal, so 7 is not a factor. Uh, 120 divided by 8 is 15, so 8 and 15 are factors. Uh, 9 does not go into 120. That, if you divide that out, that is a decimal again. Uh, 10, 120 divided by 10 
is 12, so 10 and 12 are factors. We're almost there, don't worry, almost there. 120 divided by 11, 11 does not go into 120, you'll see that you get a decimal. And then the next number is 12. You already know that 12 is a factor. Once you get to a number that you already know is a factor, that's over here on the, on the right hand side here, then you can stop. You know that you've uh, um, found all the factors. So we can stop there. Now, uh, we're multiplying to a negative, so it's got to be a positive times a negative. But we also know that we're adding to a positive number. So it's positive times a negative, but we're adding to a positive. So that tells us the larger number's got to be positive, which means the smaller number is the negative. All right, so now we're going to go through and add these up and see which one is two. Now, some of you guys may be looking at this and saying, I know what the answer is, just say it. But let's go through, and if you do know what it is, great. Um, that's, that's, uh, that shows that's a good sign, but we're going to add them up. So that's 119. Add those, add those up, that's 58. That's 37. Remember, we're trying for 2. That's 26. Negative 5 plus 24 is 19. Negative 6 plus 20 is 14. Negative 8 plus 15 is 7. Nope. Negative 10 plus 12 is 2. So we did have to go to the last one. Unless you knew that that was the pair that worked, then you can go straight to that. No rules saying that you have to go add these up in order. If you think one of them is going to work, try that one first. So our factors are W minus 10 and W plus 12. So we have um, W minus 10 equals 0 and W plus 12 equals 0. So we add 10 to both sides and we get W equals 10. And we subtract 12 to both sides, and we get W equals negative 12. You're like, well, how does that work? We got two answers? Well, not really. Remember when it's a word problem, you have to give your answer a reasonableness check. And if W is 12, or excuse me, negative 12, the, that makes no sense for the width. You can't have a negative number for length. So, our, so even though that is a valid solution to this equation, it doesn't make sense in our word problem, so we eliminate it as what we call an extraneous response or extraneous answer um, because it doesn't make sense in the problem. So W is 10, so the width is 10 because that's the width is just W, so that's easy, so 10 feet. And then the length is 10 plus 2, which is 12, so 12 feet. And that's it. So we found the length and the width of this rectangular bedroom. Okay, let's go ahead and try number uh, seven. Number seven, it says a rectangular mural has dimensions of x plus 10 and x plus 3 feet. So let's go ahead and draw another rectangle. We'll let x plus 10 be the length and then x plus 3 be the width. All right, it says if the area of the mural is 60 feet, what are its length and width? So once again, we're dealing with area of a rectangle, so that's similar to the last one. In this case, the area is 60. The length is x plus 10, and then the width is x plus 3. Now, we need to multiply these out. Now, you might say, well, what, why? Because I thought what you wanted is factors. Yes, good point, glad you said that. But we, the factors have to be equal to 0. They're not equal to 0, they're equal to 60. So we need to multiply that this out, move 60 over here, and then refactor. So it's going to go quicker than you think. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. 10 times x is 10x. And then 10 times 3 is 30. So we bring down the 60. Combine our like terms. 3 plus 10 is 13. And then we're going to subtract 60 to both sides. Let's go ahead and um, draw a line down the middle there. And we get 0 equals x squared plus 13x. 30 minus 60 is negative 30. All right, so now our C is negative 30 and our B is 13. And yes, we are going to look at this critically so we don't have to try as many possibilities. So we go to our factor sheet because we, now we have a number again less than 100. And the factors of 30, there are only four factor pairs. There are 1 in 30, 2 in 15, 3 in 10, and then 5 and 6. 
So again, we're multiplying to a negative number, but we know it has to add to a positive. So the larger number has to be positive. So we're going to make the smaller numbers negative. And so we go through here, negative 1 plus 30 is 29, doesn't work. Negative 2 plus 15 is 13, that works. That's our, those are our factors. X minus 2, and then X plus 15. So again, we zero product property, X minus 2 equals 0, and X plus 15 equals 0. So we add 2 to both sides, and we get X equals 2. We subtract 15 to both sides, and we get x equals negative 15. But again, even though negative 15 is a valid solution to this equation, it does not make sense um, for the, well, it's, it's not x is in the width, but we plug it in. Negative 15 for, uh, plus 3 is negative 12, for example. So that's not going to work. So the only valid answer is 2. So the length is 2 plus 10, which is 12. And then the width is 2 plus 3, which is 5 feet. And so the length of 12, width of 5. And by the way, you can check these. We know the area has to be 60. Area is length times width. 12 times 5 is 60, so we know it works. And then same thing on the last one that we did with the bedroom. Uh, the area had to be uh, 120, and we found the dimensions to be 12 and 10. 12 times 10 is 120, so that works. All right, so that takes care of those word problems. And uh, we've got one more thing to do here. Uh, so we need to show you this. Um, we're almost done. This is the last thing. And this is a special factoring pattern called the difference of two squares. So what I'd like you to do, we're going to write out the perfect squares up to 100. So 1, 4, um, that, let's go ahead and write, write it like this. 1 squared is 1, 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 5 is 25. Of course, that was, that's what 5 squared means, 5 times 5. 6 squared, 6 times 6 is 36. 7 squared, 7 times 7 is 49. Almost there. 8 squared, 8 times 8 is 64. Woo, 9 squared, 9 times 9 is 81. 10 squared, 10 times 10 is 100. And we're done. Okay, so um, what we're going to be talking about is factoring the difference of two squares. We're going to look at the five problems on page 19. And you're like, oh my goodness, more factoring, this is a lot of work. Not when it's, this is one of our special patterns, and this goes actually very quick. So first of all, anytime you have an even exponent, the exponent is 2, 4, 6, or 8, 10, etc., then that is a perfect square. The square root of x squared is just x, because x times x is x squared. <coughs> now, the other number, the 49, is on this list. The square root of 49 is 7 squared was 49, so the square root of 49 is 7. So we're going to put 7s in there. And then the pattern is just minus and plus, and that's it. You are done. That is it. All right, now next is x squared plus 25. Well, here's the problem with this one. Yes, 25 is on the list. Square root of 25 is 5. Uh, x squared is a perfect square. The problem is, and maybe you see it already, this isn't minus, it's plus. And so this one, um, we can write, um, already, well, they were already factored. Uh, we'll just say can't be factored. Um, yeah, can't be factored. And we should say can't be factored with real numbers. There actually is a way to do that with imaginary numbers, but that's something you'll learn in Algebra 2. All right, now next is number 3. So we got 4x squared minus 64. And let's see if we can factor this. So it is a minus. Um, 4 and 64 are both on our list here, so that's good. And x squared, that's an even exponent, so that's, that's good. So the square root of 4 is 2. Square root of x squared is x. And then we know it's minus and plus. And then the square root of 64, 8 squared was 64, so the square root of 64 is 8. We have 2x minus 8, and then 2x plus 8. There's more we can common factors we can factor out, but right now we just want to practice with this skill right here. All right, now number 4, 9x squared plus 49. Well, similarly to number 3 here, 9x squared and 49 are all perfect squares, but similar to number 2, this is plus, not minus. So can't be factored. 
So that's all we can do there. If that was a minus, though, we could factor it. Uh, finally, we have 10x squared minus 49. So 49 is on our list. That is a perfect square. Uh, x squared is a perfect square. 10, though, 10 is not on our list. You say, there it is. It's right there. No, that's 10 squared, which is 100. The list is these numbers right here. So 10 is not a perfect square. So since 10 is not a perfect square, that cannot be factored. So that was a lot of can't be factors. Out of five problems, we had three of them can't be factors. But study these one and three real good. Make sure that you understand that well. And I'm sure you'll do very well. Well, that was quite the lesson, was it, was it not? Uh, 20 to 22 is where the homework and lesson checkpoint are. And so... Uh, you know, again, ask questions and even rewatch the video if needed. Uh, but I'm sure if you do uh, study and do well and have all this down, just with a little bit of work, you're going to do great. So and factoring is a very important concept for several things that you do in algebra. So we already saw one solving equations. And uh, so and it comes into play in other areas. So very important that you understand that well. And we will see you in the next video, which is 21.2. Uh, more, a little more factoring, and but we'll see you in the next video, and good luck with that work.